You know, so you know, we would happen right at time to all broadcast. Yeah. I didn't like they were out there. Like that, but, you know. mm -hmm. yeah. There's always something all the time. That's how the enemy will do. So I say something to be about to jump off of the enemy. I'm just turning pages. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, just, I'm just turning pages. That's all. I see that's what I'm, what I'm concerned about. Cause this is stuff to throw stuff off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At any rate, um, here we are again tonight. And uh, you know, it's interesting when you're being led by the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will tell you to do things. And this is what I want people to understand is church should not be the same old thing. Most people, that's what they're getting. And that's really why they're getting the results that they are. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it's, it's ritual form and ceremony. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a church that you got a bunch of Freemasons in, uh -oh. you know, you ain't got nothing going down to start with. Mm -hmm. right? That's what it really boils down to. You've got corruption from end to end. I'm sweating because the unction is so strong on me tonight. It's not just because it's uh, so hot in the natural, but the Spirit of God got on me real strong. Uh, a few hours ago, and the Spirit's really dealing with me right now. It's a good possibility those of you who are either watching this live or in the archive, you feel it, you know, this say that, you know, it's the Holy Ghost with fire. And uh, right now I'm feeling the fire of the Holy Ghost. But a lot of times you need fire because fire is a purifier. And um, there's a great deal of purification that had to take place in all of our lives. And, when the Bible says, be you feel, it's really talking about more than one time. And so, as you are refilled, there's a uh, purging that's going on. Uh, you're, actually, your body's being forged. This, too, is part of the teaching that folk don't get about uh, being in the realm of the Spirit. Is that uh, they don't find out about how the Holy Spirit moves in people, not just upon them. But what it does to your body, because remember that we are the body of Christ and members in particular, and that we are the temples. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's that, and that's what throws people off. They're so busy thinking that God is only going to move in the church house, mm -hmm. and that's not true. You know, we we are the church. Therefore, wherever we go, mm -hmm. we take Jesus with us. And so, um, remember what we said the other day. It was what kings, priests, and prophets were the only individuals. Under the old covenant that were anointed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, now, sister, uh, the veil has been torn or rent, as it's written in the King James Version after Jesus' sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, and now we go to the Father through the high priest and apostle, the chief apostle of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I'm talking about. I'm trying to get people to understand they need to change their lens mm -hmm. and how they're viewing You should be viewing certain things. Um, we said we go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. That's literal. You know, people say that, but it becomes a mm -hmm. hackneyed or tried expression, mm -hmm. which means it's something that's, that's repeated a great deal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, but people don't even begin to glean or begin to understand mm -hmm. what they're really talking about. It's literal. It is not figurative, it's not allegory, it is literal. And the Bible says that we go and we move from face to face from glory to glory, but it's what? Precept upon precept, line upon line here, little there. Little. And what the Holy Spirit wants to open up to people tonight, and I talked a little bit about it the other night too, and that's what the Lord was telling me I needed to elaborate on. I believe some of you uh, watched the video and, I, you know, you, you had questions as you watched it. And you probably had <coughs> excuse me, questions since then. Um, remember I was talking about uh, the man that ordained me for ministry, Brother Daryl Jessup. When he first started going out with his brother, J. Charles Jessup. And um, Google J. Charles Jessup. Um, and you find out the Bible had one of the uh, first healing ministries that was on radio. They were from Texas. And he actually went into Mexico on the station <clears throat> in Mexico, but it had, you know, a lot of AM broadcasting power. 
large town, excuse me. So he broadcasted not only in Mexico, but out to Texas, I imagine, Louisiana, the lower part of the South uh, on, the, on the station. He actually sold his car uh, to get money to be able to go on radio that way. A lot of times you hear these stories about people <clears throat> selling their cars or doing something. They actually do it. God will tell them to do it. Uh, that's one of the things you have to understand that God doesn't move in the natural the way that we would a lot of times. And people think it's crazy. In other words, you know, folks thought that uh, <laughs> that Noah was crazy. Mm. You know, they'd never seen rain before, so what was he talking about? But if they had been tuned with God, they would have understood. And that's, yeah, and see, that's, and what wrong, what's wrong is people are, are <clears throat> still crying out, but people aren't in tune with God. And because they're not in tune with God, folk think you're crazy. And see, that's that's what makes folk look real stupid when God says, I was there all the time. You just didn't pay attention to it. Um, but what I want to really talk about tonight is something that it's kind of like the forest before in the trees. You can't see the just as far as comes in the trees. In other words, it's there before your eyes, and you can't see it. Um, I talked about when Brother Daryl went with Jay Charles to pray for somebody in the hospital, and he hadn't been doing it very long. But Jay Charles had, you know, he he talked about having doubts. Mm -hmm. He having doubt, even though he was there holding his brother's hands. But then he thought about. It. He said, "Well, it'll be all right because Jay Charles believe even though I'm I'm having a problem believing." Mm -hmm. The reason, I, one of the reasons why I believe God is, is uh, saying this is because we all have those moments when we might get shaky. That Bible says that a, a double-minded man, you know, can't receive anything from God because, you know, you're double-minded. You know, you're up on one thing and down on the other. But sometimes our faith gets shaken and we have to uh, go through a testing of our faith. And sometimes as we're going through the fight, Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principal, against powers, against the rules of darkness, against wicked spirits in high places. So sometimes when you're in that fight, doubt, and that's the reason why the enemy's fighting you. Mm -hmm. Trying to get you to doubt because you pray and you know, you, you may have fasted. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have done this, you may have done that. Look like that a bad boy just don't want to break. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a trial of your faith. Now, I do believe the Catholics have got that right when they use the term about they lost the faith. Now, I truly believe that's the correct terminology because that's what happens. The Bible says, what? We shall reap a new season if we faint not. And that means if you don't give up believing God. And a lot of times we get challenged and sometimes we don't believe God. And I can't remember what year it was, but it had to be at least maybe 33, 34 years ago, I remember the Lord telling me, he said, oh, you don't believe me for some things. And I said, what? He said, no, you really don't believe. And I couldn't argue. And I knew the devil wasn't telling me that. Mm -hmm. And what it was, I was still learning how to come out of my natural mind mm -hmm. into the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. We get so, we're so carnally minded mm -hmm. that a lot of times we vacillate and we get caught up and see we have head knowledge in our head, we believe it. But a lot of times it's not in our heart. And a lot of times we don't. But what I'm going to talk about tonight is getting to a place to where you may run across people who don't necessarily have what folk would call a strong faith. Or maybe hardly any faith at all. Mm -hmm. Now, what, I, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to give you an example of what God has shown. Now, remember, Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater work shall you do, because I go to the Father. And I, what I'm talking about, essentially, tonight is greater works. In other words, everybody needs shelter, clothing. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has basic needs. You know, anybody took psychology, remember, man's little hierarchy of needs. Okay, yeah, you know, so so all you college educated people, I'm, I'm uh, throwing throwing some class stuff back at you right now. I remember studying Maslow when I first went to college in the 70s, and it's funny how 
when I went back to college in the in the uh, 2000s, how they added the man's lowest hierarchy of needs in those mm -hmm. uh, 30 some years. Uh, what they added was excretion and sex. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that wasn't part of hierarchy yeah. of needs when I was in college. They went super corny. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, so you know, they put that in there. Mm -hmm. But uh, everybody else, so everybody's got basic needs. That's why, mm -hmm. that's why the Bible says the love of money is real all evil. Money is not evil. Money by itself is not evil. Unfortunately, we live in a society that was, if it was a thousand years ago, if you had a bunch of salt, you were rich. Mm -hmm. Salt was the commodity. Mm -hmm. the priorities yeah, priorities were different. Yeah, priorities were Yeah. We don't come up with this stuff that, that represents wealth called money. But the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, and you know the OJs had to saw all about, you know, for the love of money. And you know, one of the last verses said, you know, money is the root of all evil. But, and people quote that even before the song was made, thinking they're quoting the Bible and they're misquoting it. So everybody needs money. Money is a tool. We need money for shelter, clothing, food. We, we need money if we're going to purchase a vehicle. We need money to do hardly anything, any kind of barter or trade it would, would be called. You know, we need money. Why do we work? For money, because if they didn't pay us, unless we got money, we ain't gonna work. You know, mm -hmm. so, so the thing about it is, is all of this is encompassing to get you to understand this, okay? But what I want to emphasize tonight is this, and what I have to give you is some of it is Bible, but a lot of it I'm gonna give you working examples of people who have been out in the field and gone through this. All right. Now, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please it. Okay? Faith is some of the things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. For about the elders obtained the truth report. We know that through faith, the worlds were framed by the word of God. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11. But what I want you to understand is, when you really begin to get more of a revelation of faith, and it becomes more expansive, mm -hmm you begin to understand that the time will come when you can start praying for people and the people you're praying for don't necessarily have to have faith. That's really and that's what I was talking about the other night. Mm -hmm. Because, why? Because you have faith. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to ask me, have I prayed for people who didn't necessarily have faith? Yes. I prayed for people and they've been surprised when they felt the power of God in them. So how, why are you going to be surprised unless you, if you were expecting it? And I know sometimes God has touched people they weren't expecting it. Because I can remember a lot of times when I was a single man and a bunch of carnal women will just want me to put my hand on them. Right. You know, they just, they just will just hot and bother. Mm -hmm. And they just want me just to physically touch them. And they will get shocked when the power of God will hit them. So they weren't expecting that. You see, so that was that was not their expectation to feel God move. They just said, "Oh yeah, you pray for me." Right. Purposeless exercise or gesture. Right. So in other words, it was just something that exercise. It's a, it's a it's, for many people that's what prayer is. It's a ritual, mm -hmm. and they've had it so many times, and nothing happened mm -hmm. to where if people would get shocked. I've had people about snatch out. The hands were mine when the power of God would hit them. Why? Because they were not used to the power of God moving when somebody prayed for them. So, yeah, I prayed for people and they didn't really believe. But there are other examples of other ministers of the gospel. I'm just going to give a few of them. I have my son talking about this. Um, the first person that I heard of to do this was the advantage Jack Coe. That's Jack Coe. C-O-E. So Google or Bing him. Mm -hmm. Jack Coe. He was part of the Voice of Healing in America. The Healing Revival that started in 1948. Um, which, by the way, was the same time that Israel became a nation. Um, there is a parallel with things that happened in Israel with the church. 
Um, Jack Cole had tremendous faith. There's no doubt he had the gift of faith. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who could have the gift of faith. See, I believe a lot of times because of what God has given us that we've got to do exploits when people, even people we're praying for, don't expect it. Now, in meetings, Jack does some very docile things. He was known to do what Smith Wigglesworth had done. He was known to have a whole bunch of people lined up in wheelchairs and grab people just snatch them out of the wheelchairs. And in, mo and in most cases, most of the people got instantaneously healed. All of them didn't, but most of them did. By him just grabbing them and snatching them up. But what did Jesus say? Take your bed up and walk. So he felt emboldened, emboldened, just like Smith Wigglesworth did, was to snatch him up. And I think he punched some people like Smith Wigglesworth did too in the stomach as well. Um, but the other person, <laughs> well, there's something else that Jack Cole did. There was a story of him being uh, in a building in an elevator. And it was this uh, couple. And I believe the wife had just come from the doctor's office. And she got a terrible report. Mm -hmm. She had cancer. And, the, and I guess along that time, that was what? Late 40s, early 50s. Mm -hmm. They certainly didn't have the, the, the means to do cancer like they can now. Mm -hmm. And so the woman, I believe, was crying or about to bust out crying. Jack didn't ask the woman, could he pray for her? Jack just reached over and laid his hand on the woman mm -hmm. and prayed. Mm -hmm. And the woman got healed. Mm -hmm. Now, that's kind of breaking the laws in the sense that, mm -hmm. now I see, because some folks say what well, the Bible said, lay hands suddenly on no man. Right. You got rightfully divide. You got to rightfully divide the word of truth. Mm -hmm. See, so sometimes we had to make sure that we, we got to be wise about it. Mm -hmm. We got to yeah, rightfully divide the word of truth. Mm -hmm. But see, the Holy Spirit could have told him to pray for that woman. Paul didn't ask the girl with the spirit of divination if he could perform deliverance on her. Exactly. It was like he just saw it was that opportunity because the woman probably, the Lord told him that the woman with the cancer had a spirit of infirmity. So he just took authority, authority over the spirit of infirmity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just laid hands on her and commit. And he did it so quick mm -hmm. that the, the uh, husband couldn't. Do anything, right? <laughs> you know, and who knows? The Holy Ghost could have frozen. Mm -hmm. At any rate, he just reached over in the elevator and just laid hands on the woman. And the woman got healed. Mm -hmm. Um, that's bold. Mm -hmm. that, that that's bold. Um, and the other instance was, and it seems kind of contradictory, but sometimes people will come to your meetings mm -hmm. just to prove that you're a fraud. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I, I was warned about that. Um, and I wish I, I wish I got the woman's name. I, I should have. Um, but there was this woman who went to a Catherine Kuhlman meeting. Dolores Winder. That's it. Yeah. What's the name? Say it again. I think it's Dolores Winder. We got, we got a book up here. Yeah. yeah. And, um, she had a very serious, um, a malady. When I first heard Ralph Wilkinson talk about it, Years ago, I've been here. Well, naturally, I just didn't understand it. And I probably heard him talk about it 20 years or more ago, talking on Benny Hinn about it. Mm -hmm. And when I finally had a chance to really see medically mm -hmm. what was wrong with her, mm -hmm. she was messed up. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember the story. Didn't somebody pretty much kind of almost against her will talk her into coming with her to the meeting? Mm -hmm. And so she really sat there, really not believing. Right. But it was somebody who was concerned about her, mm -hmm. talked her finally into coming to the meeting. Mm -hmm. And the woman, by the way, did not like Catherine Kuhn. Mm -hmm. And pretty but thought that it was phony, mm -hmm. a bunch of ho hocus pocus. Well, as usual, God proved himself. Mm -hmm. God heals the woman. And the woman really didn't expect it. And I can remember reading Catherine from the stage saying to the woman, you don't even like me. Mm -hmm. And I think the woman even was 
Kind of told him some smack. Mm -hmm. But God had healed the woman. I think the woman said, I don't even believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But God healed the woman. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, so see, and really, until you came on stage, Catherine did not lay hands on people. She would just wait until the Holy Spirit said to start praying, mm -hmm. and she would pray from the platform. Mm -hmm. And there were literally hundreds of people who were getting healed without her laying hands. Now, she would want a testimony, and they would come up and she would lay hands on people. Mm -hmm. But they were getting healed without her laying hands on people, mm -hmm. which Jesus did. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's just like when the uh, centurion, think about it now. Jesus didn't lay hands on him. He just said, speak the word and my servant will be healed. But what? The servant didn't necessarily have faith to be healed. He could have, but the Bible doesn't say the servant did. The centurion did. So let's stop and think about, okay, you got one person who comes to Jesus. The person is somewhere else. He's not even of the house of Israel. So he's a pagan. He's a Goya. You know? But he had faith, but the person didn't necessarily have faith. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So the thing about it is, is I believe some of these so-called hard cases, if you want to call them that, mm -hmm. I believe there's a place in the and i you know, I've I've talked with people. And I'm asking, can I pray for them? And they're just about trying to talk y'all to praying for them. And if a person is reluctant to let you pray for them, how much faith do they have? Right. Now, if I got to convince you to allow me to pray for you, mm -hmm. then that means you're not receptive to prayer. Right. Yeah, they got walls up. Mm -hmm. So, and I have prayed for people, and God has healed them, but it was what? It was because I pressed in to ask for permission. Mm -hmm. But there have been times when I've just touched people because the Bible said lay hands on people. Mm -hmm. You know? So sometimes I just touch people. And when I do, the power of God hits them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I had people jump or jerk. You know, they, or I'm shaking people's hands. I'm just shaking people's hands and the power of God hit people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember shaking somebody's hand in Tarboro. And I remember one person went down to their knees. The power of God hit her. I didn't pray for them. I just shook their hand. And sometimes when I shake people's hands now, I feel the power of God hit her. Did they have faith for that to happen? I mean, you know, the thing about it is, I didn't pray for I wasn't praying for them. I was just shaking their hand. And it wasn't always necessarily what you would call the right hand of fellowship. I'm just giving it a normal greeting. Right. Yeah. And God just saw and you, Yeah, God just touched them. Yeah, it's a sovereign move of God. So that's what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about that you have such a, a presence of God, which is such a saturation on your life, that you just go in a room and the atmosphere really does change. Mm -hmm. See, I've heard folk teaching, teach on it and preach on it. And then they meet me and then get mad because stuff like that would go down. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, there's some of the haters in the body of Christ. There's some haters in the body of Christ. You don't believe it? Ask the folk that are uh, singing your choir. <laughs> there's a bunch of haters in the body of Christ. And there's, there's a bunch of competition in ministry. Um, way too much competition. This is not a competition. It's not a competition. It shouldn't be viewed as such. And uh, I'm saying all this to you because I, some of you, I truly believe some of y'all may have been prompted to lay hands on people, do something unusual. See, sometimes God might tell you, well, go shake so-and-so hand, just be able to talk to him. See, the Holy Ghost got, the Bible says, to be wise as serpent, but harmless as doves. So there's a wisdom to, to ministering to people. Sometimes talking to somebody and just touch them, touch them on the shoulder is a way to get the anointing on them. 
Sometimes just doing that is the way to get the anointing in them. Many times the Holy Spirit will give you an unusual instruction. God might go, might tell you to go pray over the tools on your job. Because there's somebody on your job that may be uh, going through some kind of stuff. And they may be reluctant for you to lay hands on your job. Or you may be on a place where you got to be careful about that stuff. But the enemy is looking for stuff on the job trying to find it. Mm -hmm. So again, using wisdom about how to do it. And see, right now somebody may have been told to go pray over something. If God told you to go pray over something on your job, go pray over something on your job. The point of contact works. God may tell you to lay your hand on on the door that everybody got to walk through. If God tells you to do it, and just say in Jesus' name, do it. There's power in that. I felt virtue go out when I said that. Somebody caught it. What I've been teaching people for over 30 some years is the practicality of living in the spirit realm. Because it's for more than just in church. And you have to be very wise, especially on your job. Because people can actually take you to HR. Mm -hmm. So you got to be wise about how you do certain things. Mm -hmm. Because you want, you want to be able to thwart the enemy and try to stay out of trouble as much as possible. Because the devil's telling folk to... Uh, I think somebody got fired from saying have a blessed day on the job. Yeah, I saw that article too. It was a bank teller. A bank teller. Yeah. I know it was a woman. They fired a woman that was at a, a Winn Dixie here in Greensboro that wore a, 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 a badge that said something about uh, the Bible or church, and they fired her. Mm -hmm. What you got is extremism, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but you know, it's the, it's the spirit of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way that that would happen when we were growing up. But see, the spirit of the Antichrist is taking over more and more. And you got more and more people that are speaking out against Christianity. And everybody else can do that stuff. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. But Christianity is, is being uh, assaulted. Mm -hmm. um, so those examples are the ones that I want to talk about. My son can talk about uh, more, and there's going to be some kind of wild sounding, uh, boy, I felt the, the shift in the spirit when I said that, um, about this, about people being prayed for, who don't believe in the same God. Yeah, I'm going to say that again so you can catch what I said. We're going to have a say lot moment. We're going to stop and calmly think about that. You're going to hear testimony of somebody being prayed for who says, I don't even believe in your God. Man, that's hitting some people. I feel the virtue going out as I'm saying that. Because God wants to radically change the way that you think, the way that you see things. Because a lot of times now, what's being taught in a lot of these poor people will kill your faith. I mean, just slam out, just kill it. And you need to understand that the Bible says that they that know their God shall do exploits. So I'm believing for people to do exploits. I, I've always been teaching people the stuff you see me do, you can do it. And it's true because that's how God works. God works on replication. But a lot of times you have to be around an unction and an anointing mm. and see it operated. Mm. So once you see the operation and be around it, then mm. you can do it. So that's that's why I want to uh, give it over to my son to talk about this because he can tell you some even more astonishing um Testimonies and I can that one with that one with that woman, you know, like I said, uh, with Kathy Coomer, 
That's just a tremendous miracle. Say that woman's name again. Uh, Dolores Winder. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely Dolores Winder. Because see, I had a, I knew her last name, but I wasn't sure about her first name. So if you sure about her first name, and I'm sure about her last name. It's yeah, 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 Go yeah, Google, yeah. Google the woman. I'm sure you'll find it. You find the testimony. It's on uh, YouTube. Her, her Sid Roth. Uh, Sid Roth's TV show. Yeah, you can watch it. Yeah, they need to check it out because some 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 of these situations that y'all are in, um, you just need to just believe it. But I'm say, but I say this to you though, if I'm teaching you this, I already believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so the thing about it is, is you got somebody agreeing with you. I'm just not that physically with you. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, is it's available to you. And just believe God will use you, even in some of those so-called impossible situations. Um, now I'm gonna have my son talk to you about some of the others, some really wild testimonies about some of the same stuff. Um, okay. So the first one that comes to mind, uh, yeah, there's actually a couple where. Um, God was uh, trying to remember the, term, the terminology. Yeah, he was teleporting stuff. Um, and like Pop was saying, a lot of times the, the word goes forth so that you can hear it, right? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But then, like Pop was saying, you got to see somebody do it. And so at this phase in my life, this was around like 2009, uh, we started checking out a lot of David Herzog. And David was always talking about him, like quantum physics and glory, et cetera, et cetera. And um, basically, I ran into a situation after a gig where uh, a friend of mine, we were all hanging out outside just chilling uh, on my old car, uh, my old Honda. And, um, you know, I dap up everybody, and I'm like, yo, I'm about to skate out. Everybody was like, all right, Q, I'll holler at you soon. And then I get my car, and I'm driving from Raleigh, which is about a 30-minute ride, back to Durham. And, like, midway through the ride, a friend of mine called me up and was like, uh, yeah, dog, like, did you see my keys? And I was like, nah, man, I ain't see your keys. And immediately... The Lord said while I was on the phone with him, Pop was saying you'll receive an unusual instruction. Holy Spirit was like, yeah, man, uh, tell him that if he doesn't find his keys to call you back immediately. That doesn't make any sense because I'm at least 15, 17 miles away. And so I said it to him. And I I even said it. I was talking about having doubt and reservation. I even said it like, this don't make any sense. Knowing me, I probably prefaced it with, hey, brother, this don't make no sense, but check this out. Uh, call me back um, if you don't find your keys. And as somebody who didn't believe, like, or who, who was just like, bro, that doesn't make any sense, uh, my boy was like, all right, Q, I'm going to call you back on some, you know, like, dude, you ain't making no sense, but I'll do it anyways. So um, whenever I get off the phone with him, the Holy Spirit gave me further instructions. And this is everything Paul was just telling you because it's precept by precept, line upon line. So the first precept was, Quint, just tell him to call you back. If I hadn't have done that, that would have shut off the whole miracle, right? So whenever I get off the phone with him, the next precept and the next line upon line was, the Holy Spirit was like, uh, I'm going to do something for him, you know what I'm saying, just... Uh, just to remind him, you know, saying that you know I love him and I'm real, and the reason why the Holy Spirit needed to do that for him was because he he was like me, he's a preacher's kid, but he went like he's still he's still uh, he's still doing his own thing, and the reason why he's doing his own thing is because like a lot of the people that Pop was describing earlier, he's witnessed a lot of bad things in church, he's seen a lot of crap going on in the pulpit and out in the pews, which has made him have a disdain for Christianity. And so um, the Lord was very specific 
and he was telling me he was like you know that scripture about like how the father in heaven knows how many hairs is on your head he was like uh he was like i want you to quote that whenever you pray for me so i was like all right cool so do hit me back and he was like uh yeah man so i ain't find my keys you know i'm calling you back you know to see what's good and so i told him i was like yeah dog like i'm gonna pray for you and god's gonna uh help you find your keys um and then i was like yo so can i pray for you and so you know once again he was like all right i mean i ain't got nothing to lose uh and so i prayed for him and i said exactly what the holy spirit said to me um to say which was uh father thank you for this young man um lord i know you love him and uh lord i want i need you to do this for him i want you to do this for him so that you can prove to him how much you love him uh because your word says that you know what i'm saying you love us so much that you know how how many uh hairs you know how even how much you know the hairs are on numbered on our head right and so I got through praying, and uh, I was like, all right, you know, I'll holler at you uh, later. And I didn't, it wasn't like thunder, you know what I'm saying, cracked across the sky, peals of thunder, you know what I'm saying. It wasn't like my car started levitating or anything crazy. Uh, I just got off the phone with him, and he uh, called me back. It wasn't even 15 seconds later, and he was yelling at the top of his voice. He was like, Q, Q dog like bruh the prayer work he um he got off the phone with me and the way that it was the way the way it was was he was so desperate to find his keys the club that we were playing at was uh was on like this block right mm -hmm. and he actually walked around to the uh to the block that was perpendicular and he was like at least a block maybe two blocks up away from the club which in the natural didn't make any sense because he knew that he never he he shouldn't have lost his keys anywhere in that part mm -hmm. because he never went there over the course of the night but you know how it is sometimes when you just be done out you know you just be done like man i'm frustrated you just do anything and so this, and this was part of the miracle how god tricked him into blessing him. um he walked to a place where it would be completely impossible for him to find his keys and when he got off the phone with me he turned around and looked out in the middle of the street and his keys were sitting there the holy spirit just to mess with his head teleported the keys wherever they were inside the club outside in the middle of the street you know what i'm saying and like we got through playing it was a late night so this was like at least one or two o'clock in the morning and you know what i'm saying he called me back to uh you know, to give God praise, you know what I'm saying? Because he was like, yeah, man, I know you pray. He was like, yo, in fact, you talked about fasting and praying, Pop. It was interesting because he said, he was like, click, because, you know, he knew a little bit of the word. He was saying, he was like, yeah, dog. He was like, it's clear, you know what I'm saying? You know, that you're doing something right with God. He was like, you're fasting and praying or something. Because he was like, stuff like that just don't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but clearly, that was one instance where uh, the person didn't believe you know what i'm saying and god just overrode that person's uh unbelief with the belief that i had and it really the obedience that i had because to be completely honest with you i wasn't 100 percent into the thing too i was like all right god i'm gonna say what you want me to say but you know what i'm saying uh you you're gonna have to prove yourself and do it and thank god he did it and then after that uh another friend of mine Who's a, who's a musician as well he ain't you know really you know where he you know needs to be with god and whatnot and this happened to him god did this for him twice maybe three times if i remember correctly where we would be at the crib and see this shows you the first time he didn't believe it he was just like all right keep me talking to jesus stuff he ought to be reading his bible in my house whatever sure man you can pray for me for me to find my keys and the same thing happened that happened with my brother, you know, uh, in Raleigh. I prayed with him, and he went back into the same room that he had left out and torn all the pieces looking for the keys. And whenever he walks in, the keys are right before him, like on the dresser drawer. And then he just walks out of his room, and he just holds his keys, and he just shakes his head, you know. 
Um, <laughs> and once again, I was like, hey, dog, it's Jesus' fault. Like, Jesus really does have all power. Um, and then this, like I said, this happened to him. This, this happened for him more than once to the extent that the next time, I think it was the next two times he needed to find his keys. He just came to me. He was like, yeah, Q, man, I can't find my keys. Go ahead and pray. <laughs> And you know what I'm saying, and do that, do that, do that prayer thing that you be doing so I can find my keys and, and it, it happened again. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that was uh two instances um of people that don't speak in tongues, you know what I mean? They don't read their Bible on a regular basis. Uh one of the greatest miracles, you know what I'm saying, that's happened, you know, in my personal uh walk, uh, was for a friend of mine who's actually still a Muslim. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this boils down to the condition of the heart, yeah. which I think, you know what I'm saying, we should address at some point. But um, basically, uh, I was on a gig in another country. You know what I'm saying? I was over in China. And uh, the Lord had already made it real obvious, like the first night, because this person also was, uh, was my roommate. We shared an apartment, you know what I'm saying, uh, in China. And the Lord made it very obvious the first night via this conversation that we had, you know what I'm saying? Like we're two young men, you know what I'm saying, clear across the world. You know what I mean? We don't know each other. And we're just sitting talking about our world views, you know what I'm saying, past musical experiences, past life experiences. And uh the majority of the conversation was dictated uh by God. You know what I'm saying? We were talking about God. And the thing I was trying to get him to understand was was that uh Christianity wasn't what he thought Christianity was, especially with him being a Muslim, much less a black Muslim. You know what I mean? Uh, and I was basically telling him, I was like, look, man, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a Christian. I, I believe in Jesus. I ain't going to do everything perfect, but I'm just letting you know. The, essentially what the conversation was this, I was telling him that every morning I was going to be up praying and listening to worship music. You know what I'm saying? And basically getting along with God in order to get my day focused. So it was a two-fold conversation. I was letting him know what I was doing. So if he heard me speaking in tongues, you know what I'm saying, or worshiping God, he wouldn't think I was crazy. And even if he did, I was just letting him know either way it was going to happen. And then secondly, you know what I'm saying, I was also letting him know, like, yo, I need my space in the morning. You know what I mean? So that was really, like, the, like, tangible part. And then, like, the residual effect was we just started talking about God and how real God was. And so um, at the, that was the very first night being in China, the very last night in China. It shows you, you know what I'm saying, how things recapitulated and went to another level. God had already proven himself uh, several times over, you know what I'm saying, with just us being roommates, right? And so it came to a point where this cat is not even of the same faith as I, but he's asking me to pray for a situation you know what I'm saying, is going on in his life. Um, the situation was, uh, I remember how, I remember what planted the seed for that. I remember I caught a real bad, I caught a summer cold because I had the air conditioning on blast mm -hmm. in my room. And I remember um, God like healed me. Like he healed me. It was like all of the symptoms like left in like a day because I just told, and he heard me. He heard me say, I was speaking to the cold. I was telling the cold it was not going to win. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that was where the initial seeds were planted in terms of him saying, like, the door being open for, uh, for him to let me pray for him. But at any rate, um, we're in this restaurant, and he was telling me how the relationship between his brother and, him, and himself, you know what I'm saying, was like really, really strained, you know, like crazy, like, life instances. I think his brother had like some mental issues and whatnot. And uh, he was just asking for prayer because he was like, at the end of the day, you know, the cat's still my brother, you know what I'm saying? I still love him. And I just want to be able to at least just be in the same room with him without choking him, you know? And, uh, you know, so essentially he was asking for prayer of restoration because he and his brother had rapped for at least like a decade or something. It was, it was something like serious, right? They weren't talking to each other. And so um, I prayed in tongues and this is why papa's saying sometimes the holy spirit's gonna give you unusual instructions the first instance where i prayed for the for the friend of mine and his keys were teleported right in front you know saying in front of him the lord had me pray in english but in this particular instance the lord holy spirit they all the same person you know what I'm saying father the word and holy ghost these three are uh 
they bear record in heaven and they agree. It's 301. Uh, the Holy Spirit told me to speak in tongues. And the reason why is because in Romans in the 8th chapter, it says that the Spirit knows expressly what to pray for. So the Spirit knows exactly what to pray for, right? Whenever our natural minds, whenever our carnal minds don't. There's going to there's gonna come times where God's going to tell you exactly what to pray for. Then there are going to be other times where he's going to tell you to use the technology of tongues, you know what I'm saying, so that you can take it to a whole nother level and you can pray about a bunch of other things. Like Pop says, sometimes the things don't necessarily need to be said publicly, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but either way, you just need us to obey however God leads you to do it, however weird it sounds. And... Uh, Pray for the uh, pray for the cat in tongues. It worked out perfect because we were in a Chinese restaurant, so they probably just thought I was speaking another earthly language, uh, which I probably was because the word tongues in his language. Make a long story short, he wasn't even home a week, and he calls me back. You know what I'm saying? Because we were still Skyping. You know? mm -hmm. And he Skyped me. He was like, Larry. He was like, I don't know what you said because he was like, you was wilding out speaking in tongues once again. You know what I'm saying? You know the differences in belief. But he was like, dog, he was like, something definitely worked. He was like, the prayer worked because he was like, I'm rooming with my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like the Lord had reorchestrated uh, the situations in his life to where not only did the Lord patch up their relationship, but he patched it up. He, he took him out of a bad situation that he was in with his roommate and then put him in a situation where now he was actually living with the brother that he was really concerned about patching up the relationship. Mm -hmm. And once again, that happened with a with a cat who's a who's a uh, who's a Muslim. Muslim, you know I'm saying he's uh, he's in a lie. Um, I can give you another instance. A friend of mine who's in the New Age. Uh, she had uh, she was developing some kind of throat disease, and you know, or not throat disease, but she was developing some kind of throat condition which was a drag because she's a singer and we were about to record her album <clears throat> you know what i'm saying so this happens like conveniently right before we get ready to record and the holy spirit was like bro go ahead and pray for us so i can freak her out you know now i also want to use this to show you something else too about how doubt can make you lose your healing too um but to make a long story short uh i talked with her you know what i'm saying i just asked if i could pray with her and she was cool with it and uh, the Lord immediately began healing the throat. Now, here's what she messed up. And I've had two people do this. Pop taught me that this was possible, that this could happen possibly through an instance that happened with his dad, my grandfather, whenever he prayed for him and God healed him, but then he talked himself out of his miracle. Um, in this instance with my friend, Whenever I took my hand off of her throat, she was like, oh, my God, like, my, like, like I feel my throat being healed. Yo, this is crazy. This is crazy. She was like, yo, like, this is, this is dope. And she was excited. But you got competing spirits. You know what I mean? She's in the new age. So that person who they refer to as Holy Spirit, ain't the same Holy Spirit in the Bible, mm -hmm. regardless of how much that Holy Spirit tries to quote scripture and talk about Jesus. If it's not saying that Jesus is the only way to God the Father, then it definitely ain't the Holy Spirit, because Jesus said in John 14, 15, and 16 that the role of the Holy Spirit was to say everything that Jesus said before, right? And so at any rate, she um, talked herself out of it, because then she began to say, you know what I'm saying, well, maybe this is just temporary. You know I mean, she began to speak like a lot of doubt, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and she, she lost the same thing happened recently, you know what I'm saying? This is kind of sad to me. Uh, a cat who I don't even really know that well, but I met him uh, in a coffee shop. We were scheduled to play a gig together. He's a guitarist, and he had, he developed, I think he already has like carpet tone. But <laughs> either way, he got like some funky thing happening with his wrist. If you know anything about guitar, you know you need your wrist. And the cat, um, now remember, he's not Christian. Neither was my friend who was in New Age. This uh, this cat is basically like an intellectual. I mean, like this dude. Part of our conversation, he was talking, he was teaching me like some crazy uh, study. He was reading a scholarly article about a study about some rare disease that cats have, 
And the only reason why he was even checking out the article was because it was dealing with some crazy math formula, some algorithm, some like dense algorithm with all these integers and variables that if you saw it, you would think it was like a computer password. That, you know what I'm saying? So he's a really smart, uh, carnal minded individual. And so we was rapping, you know what I mean? And he saw my healing Bible. And he was like, yo, the first thing he said was, he was like, yo, what is a healing Bible? You know what I'm saying? I, I actually get that a lot. And so I told him, I was like, yo, it's basically just like a topical Bible. All that means is that the topic of this particular Bible, all the scriptures in it, you know what I'm saying, that deal with healing are highlighted in red, right? And I explained that to him. And I was explaining to him, you know, like how I was, you know, the Bible, uh, I'm studying, the, it's a King James Version Bible, but I'm just checking out these particular passages on healing. And so Pop said, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. So the Holy Spirit was like, there's your inroad. He was like, go ahead and ask him if you can experiment. You know what I'm saying? They're going, they're going, we got to be flexible with the Holy Spirit. Paul, Paul said it like this, be all things to all men. Mm -hmm. When you're talking, when you're talking to nerds and you can actually speak some nerd, talk like a nerd. Whenever you're talking, you know what I'm saying, street people, you know what I'm saying, or, or people who aren't that educated, and you can speak fluent colloquialism, use that. You know what I'm saying? If you, you, you know, adjust because, yeah, that's what you need to do. And so, uh, you know what I mean? I ain't no dumb dude. Like, obviously, I can't do math like him, but I ain't stupid. You know what I'm saying? I can understand at least holistically what the article was about, and that's what we were discussing. And so I was like, yeah, man, I was like, bro, I was like, let's let's conduct an experiment. I mean, it's just like the scientific method, you know, uh, according to the Bible, my educated guess or my hypothesis is that if I pray for you in the name of Jesus, you know what I'm saying, something's going to happen. Boom, boom, bam. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you know what I'm saying, I framed it, right? The, the Holy Spirit gave me the witty invention on how to frame it and talk to him. And he was like, sure, man. You know what I mean? So I prayed for him and immediately he said, he felt his uh his hand first first off he couldn't do this he couldn't clench his fist without it hurting like like hurting excruciating pain and he was sitting there doing this and he was looking at me like dude this is crazy he was like because i was asking you know what i'm saying because you know i ain't gonna front i was like yo i wanted to see something crazy like i wanted to see him jump i be like oh my god i don't know he starts speaking in tongues and he was just you know he's an intellectual so he was very contemplative he was he was just going very slow. And then he looked at me and I was like, well, yo, did anything happen? He was like, I have to say it has because uh, I couldn't clench my fist before um, without this hurting real bad. You know what I mean? Uh, to make a long story short, I prayed for him again and he felt his arm getting better. But then the last time I rapped with him, because like I said, we were scheduled to play a gig together. He actually had to cancel the gig, or at least him doing the gig, because of the, the arm injury. You know what I'm saying? Now, the Lord a lot of times will give you supernatural insight as to how stuff be happening. You know what I mean? And there's sometimes where people are going to come back and confirm it for you, but you got to get to a place uh, in God where you really believe that God knows everything. If God tells you something, that should be all the confirmation you need. Now, I'm still growing in that particular grace. You know what I mean? But at any rate, the Holy Spirit explained to him when he shot me that Facebook message that because of his analytical mind and the analytical, very carnal environment, you know what I mean, that he was in, uh, and sharing what happened to him with other people, you know what I'm saying, some doubt creeped in. And, like, that's how come that, you know what I mean, he actually uh, regressed. You know, um, and which is real sad. I mean, I'm praying about, you know, how to how another situation you know what I'm saying can present itself because the whole purpose of God overriding people's doubt with your faith is because he wants to God wants to get everybody in his perfect will. Like he wants to get everybody uh, into his perfect will which is only found in the straight and narrow path, who is Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like Jesus Christ says that he's the way, and he said that the way would be straight and narrow. So not only is Jesus the way, but he's also like this really skinny kind of thin path. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the problem that we all face is 
know what I'm saying, whether you're saved or whether you're unsaved, is that um, because the because it's straight and narrow, you know what I mean, the, the temptation, and it says straight straight is the straight and narrow is the way, you know what I'm saying, into the kingdom of heaven or to the Father. And it says that wide, you know what I mean, is the, is the way to destruction, is that we're all enticed. Um, usually whenever stuff don't go our way, you know what I mean, to abandon the straight and narrow and just go jump into the wide joint and really just go from being extraordinary to just being ordinary. Um, but God wants to uh, override people's faith, excuse me, override people's doubt with your faith so that he can get them in that place. You know what I'm saying? Um, the technology, if we could break down like how God does it, because while you were talking, the Holy Spirit was reminding me of a lot of things. People, all people, whether they're saved or unsaved, I always talk about the unconditional love of God. In fact, they actually use it as a crutch a lot of times to stay doing dumb stuff. Well, check this out. The unconditional love of God manifests like this. God don't need your permission to love you. That's unconditional love. God don't need you to love him back for him to love you. And the way that that love manifests is that even though there might be something, we talked about this on the last video, even though there might be something going wrong in your life that you don't like, there's like another 1,500 things that could have gone wrong that God actually shielded you from with his grace and his mercy. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because he loves you so much. And the because God is love, and because the Holy Spirit is God, the unconditional love of God is everywhere. And I was about, I be trying sometimes to avoid sounding like you, but you, you be saying so many things to be right. You were saying it all, I would be almost, you know, with this if I didn't say it. I just felt the unction, you know what I'm saying, uh, whenever I was saying that. And I, I think, you know, we're nearing the time to, to pray. The, uh, the Holy Spirit is everywhere, right? And like Dad said, man, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, the interesting thing about the temple in the Old Testament was that it's not the temple, but the tabernacle, mm -hmm. the tent of, of, of dwelling, where the Holy Spirit literally, God's presence literally, like, visibly manifested. People saw this huge cloud, yeah, right? Heart, heart, yeah, yeah. Heart, yeah. That, that tent was mobile. And the reason why was because that was a beta version. That was a foreshadowing. That was a prophetic uh, signifier of how the glory of God was going to be portable inside of human beings. So see, there, there are two places the Holy Spirit dwells. The Holy Spirit dwells everywhere outside of your natural body, but then whenever you become a Christian and you, you know what I'm saying, you accept him as your Lord and Savior and you begin to cultivate your relationship with him, he also lives inside of you. And everything about Christianity is voice activated. So what happens is whenever you pray for somebody, who doesn't have faith, right? What happens is, is that the Holy Spirit that's inside of you is prompted by his word. Now remember, the Holy Spirit is everywhere, mm -hmm. right? On the outside. And what happens is, is that as you begin to uh, hear what God is saying to you, God begins moving. You know what I'm saying? And the beautiful thing about all this, this technology is that it's invisible. You know what I'm saying? I saw a testimony of this uh of this one young man. I know his first name was Jason, I forget what his last name is. But we were we posted a video of him testifying about how his son was raised from the dead. He actually uh walks so close with, with Jesus that there's actually like a visible manifestation when he gets ready to pray for people. You literally see wind blowing. Like he tells them, he and a lot of times when he prayed for people like that was saying. A lot of times, he don't be up on them laying hands. A lot of times, when he was praying for this one woman, uh, he was at least five to eight feet away from her. And he was just telling her, he was like, and the hand of God is touching you right now. And he was like, and the, uh, and the wind of the Holy Spirit is, 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 is about to manifest. And then he said, right now, because he's tuned in, he knows what's going to happen. And it was nuts, man. You see a woman standing outside, Ain't no wind blowing the entire conversation, but once this dude tells her that the wind of the spirit is about to blow upon her, that's whenever her hair starts blowing. You know what I'm saying? And then as he's telling her that the Holy Spirit is touching her, God also begins to give him words and knowledge about other symptoms that she was having in her body. 
the everything in Christianity is voice activated. He be, as he began to call out what was wrong with the God began healing her right then and there. You know what I'm saying? And that's a lot of times how Pop Pop. In fact, he's probably gonna minister like that in the next couple of seconds. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna tell you what's wrong with you. And then as he's saying it, what your job to do is is to recognize. Wait a second, yo, that's what, that is exactly what's wrong with me. Wait a second, I received that by faith. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, like, you know, if he's talking about your eyes, you know what I'm saying your back, whatever a situation in your life, you receive it, and then it will begin to change. Um, but at any rate, and oh, and the reason how come this, this, I'm still giving the analogy, and we be ready for it. The uh, the reason why it works is because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. But here's the key to miracles, right? The Holy Spirit needs people as doorways, because Jesus says that He's the door, mm -hmm. and He says that He's the only way to the Father. He's the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And so, as a Christian, you will literally a door, a gateway, a portal into the supernatural. Into into the good supernatural, into the into the heavenly supernatural. This is why the Bible uh, tells us that we are supposed to say, "Open up your ancient gates, and the King of Glory shall enter in." He ain't talking about gates inside of a, a temple or a tabernacle. He's talking about the gates and bars that are in your, that are in your soul. You know, what I'm saying that in your spirit, man. Uh, and what happens is God uses the. I've been thinking this so much when we've been doing the videos, but I'll go ahead and say it now. The degree to which the degree to which you know God and you have a relationship with God is the degree to which he'll manifest when you're ministering. This is how come that so many ministers be ministering and don't nothing be happening because then people don't know God. But then you can turn around and you can get somebody, you know what I'm saying, like my dad, somebody like uh, like a Joshua Mills or more Cirillo, and they start talking about God and it just be like this huge ball of just Jesus energy, you know what I'm saying? Jesus power. The reason why is because these people, they walk with God. They know him. So God basically says, like, if God's invisible, God's like, hey, this is my homie. I'm going to manifest because of him. You know what I'm saying? Because this is my homie, I'm going to, you know, and so that's, yeah, man, that's why God don't need, he don't need people to, uh, he don't need people to believe necessarily for him to manifest. And this is why it, in this particular hour, like in the church, this is why we got to basically do what Jesus told us to do mm -hmm. in Matthew 5 and 14. Jesus says that he's the light of the world. But then he also said that we are the light of the world and that a city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. He says, so let your light shine before men so that they might see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so and the thing about those good works that Jesus is telling you to shine and show forth they're already things that God has already uh, prompted you and told you you were supposed to do before you even got to earth because Ephesians 2 and 10 says that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus uh, unto good works that there were before ordained that we should walk in them so everything that Jesus did on planet Earth, he had already done in eternity first. And it's the same thing for us as Christians. We just got to get to, for, for actual Christians, our job is we got to get, we got to, basically, man, we just got to get, like we're probably saying, man, we got to get our faith. And you got to understand that the faith in order to do these things, you can't muster it up. You know what I'm saying? It's a gift from God. So we really got to receive the faith from God, you know what I'm saying? So that God can show us the stuff that we were already called to do. Every person, like the, my friends that I prayed for, you know what I'm saying? And God gave them those miracles. God had already told me to do that before I got to earth. It was just a matter of being at the right place at the right time. Because that's another thing, you know what I'm saying? Whenever we're talking about God manifesting, God manifests always at the appropriate and set time. Yeah. 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 You're talking about, yeah. I know I've been <clears throat> uh, telling God that I have um, been wanting everything to manifest that He gave me even before the foundation of the world. Yeah. 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 You know, it's like. That's real. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's like. 
I didn't think about when I would read something, I just can see the page. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a God given ability. Right. Then it makes no difference that I did that when I was 10 years old. Right. Just because it's years later, don't mean I shouldn't have it now. Right. I'm the same person. Right. You know, so the whole thing about the age thing really should have no bearing upon it because it's a God given ability. Right. So I've been asking. For that he gave me, I said, God, you gave that to me for the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I want, and I said I want it back. Mm -hmm. So I'm, and I'm looking for, I'm looking for it to come back because it was God given ability. It's like when I was was speaking, and I told him, I said, you know, I found out that in the California Achievement Test is not going to read upside down. Nobody taught me how to read upside down. Mm -hmm. I found out taking the California Achievement Test. Mm -hmm. You know, I just read, read it, not what I didn't remember. I just looked and I was just able to read it, you know, so um, I'm asking for all those things because, and that's true, I was thinking about that myself. God is on the present. God is everywhere. God just not does not always manifest his presence. Right. And what I say about manifest is cause his presence to be felt or known because God is everywhere at all times. We have a tendency to forget it because we're just doing things and we forget God's everywhere at all times. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do, we're going to ask God's presence to manifest. That's one reason why I don't worry about regardless of where you are or what time you look at the video. Mm -hmm. You know, it's neat that somebody's going to watch this live, mm -hmm. but somebody can watch this 10 years from now and still get blessed mm -hmm. because God's presence will still be there. He says, I am that I am. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of learning how to ask God to manifest his presence. And as you call on him and ask him to manifest his presence, he'll do it sometimes. You just go somewhere and you can tell God's presence is just there. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it's because somebody's spending time in prayer, mm -hmm. meditation, reading the word. And because of that, like you say, the Kabbalah, mm -hmm. Akadesh is there god's presence mm -hmm. you feel that and that's that's what we're, we're believing for god to manifest now so i want you to think about whatever it is that you're dealing with um could be a relationship um you might not have a job um you might have an illness somebody you know might have a malady um could be anything but Jesus is the answer for everything. So we're going to ask God to touch whatever your situation is. I'm going to pray for certain uh, uh, situations. My, my niece, Sana, I saw on Facebook where she went to visit one of her friends. She's got cancer. Well, cancer doesn't mean anything, even if it's stage four cancer. You know, I believe God can, God can heal the woman. Uh, I, I've, I've known it to happen. I've seen people who were very... Very bad off sick with cancer, and God healed them. Um, there's a situation happening with one of my son's friends. Uh, he's one of my Facebook friends, too. And so we're going to be praying about him and some, some needs that he has as well tonight. So, so whatever it is that you need God to be your redeemer, God will take care of it. And he, I don't even care if you don't. You know, if you're even if you're waffling, I believe because of what I've talked about tonight, that it's been the framework has been set for God to prove Himself, especially in some areas where you've been a skeptic. Mm -hmm. I've seen other people get miracles. They said, "I don't, I didn't believe it." Mm -hmm. You know, and I said, "Well, God, they didn't believe it. Now I believe it, so I know You're going to move for me." Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to pray now. Father, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for the word. Lord, we thank you for the testimony, Lord. For the Bible says that the testimony of Jesus Christ, Eshma, Soda, or Shemirah, out of Asanda, is the spirit of prophecy. We believe what's being prophesied is that Jesus is the answer for whatever it is that, that we need. So, Lord, I believe and we propagate this tonight. And, Lord, we just thank you that no matter what enemies try to do, Lord, to try to silence us, it's not worked. Father, we pray for KD. We pray, Lord, we bind the spirit of cancer. I speak to the cancer that's ravaging her body. 
regardless of whatever it is. I curse that cancer in the name of Jesus. I curse that cancer and I command it to die. I command the cancer in her body to die. I command restoration in her body. Cancer, die. Eshmeri, the Sandra Dosabara, the Sandra, Rose, the Sandra, Oshmeri, the Era, the Sandra, Ebena, Rose, Oshiri, the Sandra, the Roma, the Basondo, Oshiri, the Sandra, Era, the Sandra, Omenindra, Eshmeri, the Sandra, Oshira, the Bena, the Sandra, Oshira, the Basande. Father, we pray about the situation, Lord, and the things that are happening in the state of Florida, Lord. Eshmeri, the Sandra, Oshmeri, the Era, the Basande. Father, I bind that demonic spirit that was seen walking in that backyard, Lord. I bind every chant, every incantation. Ishmeri the Sindra or the Sandra or Shirada. Robert the Sindra or Shirada Basande. Father, flood that domicile with your presence. Father, let the glory of God manifest throughout that entire Ishero soul. Ishirada, Isman, Brodo Sirada. Rose, Shore de Sindrida, Eshme, Risondo, Shere de Sindrida, Rada Baso, Ishma, Rada Basondo, Shirada Basande. Father, I pray with us aboard, the Sindra O Shire de Sindrida. Father, with us about Samara, the Sindra O Shirada Red de Bisondrida. Roda Bishondo O Shire de Sindra O Nindri Arada. Roba de Sindra O Shmerida de Bisondo, Shirada Basande. Father, we Ishmael the Sindra O Shira the Basandra over there the Basando. Father, we bind the spirit of rebellion, Lord. The Bible says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, Lord. We bind that rebellion. Ishira the Sindra O Shira the Sindra over the Basando. Rada Basando O Shira the Sindra over the Sindra era the Basando. Rada the Basando O Shira the Sindra over the Ishmael the era the Basando. Rada the Sindra O Shira the Basando. Father, purge that Ishara the Basando. Purge that with this air or the spirit of the body of God. Rose is shunned to Oshira, the center or the center. Rose is shunned to Oshira, the center or Shira, the air of God. Rasa is shunned to Oshira, the center or Shira, the other. Eshira, the center or Shira, the center or the center air of God. Rather be shunned to Oshira, the other, the Shara, the Samara, the Roda, the Samara. Robert is in the ocean, rather, and already that's in the ocean. Father, we that's in the ocean, rather, that's in the ocean, rather, the area that's my reducer. Robert is in the ocean, rather, and that's in the ocean. Father, flood every place, Lord, with your presence. This area, the sin of the ocean, rather, is my reducer. Father, on Kingston, right, I saw this, Lord. Rest you on the area, the sin of the ocean, rather. Rase Shamara de Sandra Oshiridi, Rosso Shiri de Sandra Oshirada, Rosso Ishmiri de Rada Sande, Father in that house that I was in this morning, Rada Bishora de Sindra Oshirada Badro, Rodo Oshiri de Sindra Oshirada Breda, Rosa de Rada Sabaso in this in the day, Robo de Sindra Oshiri de Rada Rada Bazondra Oshimara de Raba, Father, flood that house with your presence. Ashera de Sindra Oshima. Rhoda Bishondo Oshira, the Sindra Ora da Sama. Rhoda Bera da Sando Oshira, the Sindra Ora da Sindra Dee. Rhoda the Sindra Oshira, the Sandra Oshira, the Rada Bosondo. Rose Shimera, the Sindra Oshira, the Smarado. Rhoda the Sindra Oshira, the Sindra Oshimara, the Rada. Father Let Asha. Rada Bosondo, Shira, the Sindra Ora da Sandra Dee. Rose Shimari de Sindra or the Sindra. Rose Shiri de Sindra or Shimari de Rada de Vasa. Rada Bear de Vasando Shiri de Sindra or the Sandra. Rode Shiri de Sindra or Shiri de Sindra or Shimari. Rose Shiri de Sindra or Shirara de Sandra. Rose Menendra or Shimari de Sindra or Shirara de Rada. Rhoda O Shira the Sindro, Shira the Sindro, Shira the Sindro. Share the Sindro, Share the Sindro, Share the Sindro. Share the Sindro, Share the Sindro, Share the Sindro. Share the Sindro, Share the Sindro, Share the Sindro. Share the Sindro, Share the Sindro, Share the Sindro. Rasa Shamara is our spirit of the Lord. 
Rosa Shura de Sindra Oshirada, Rosa Shura de Sindra Oshirada Berada, Rosa Shura de Sindra Oshmara Derada Baso. Father, let Rada Asandra Oshira de Samira de Sindra. Father, Rada Asandra Oshira de Sindra Oshira de Rabasondo. Father, Rada Asandra Oshira de Sindra Oshira de Rabasondo, Shira de Sindra Ora de Sindra Oshira de Rabasondo. Rada Bashondo Oshira de Sindra Ora de Sindra de Sindra de Sindra de Sindra Oshira de Sindra de Sindra de Sindra de Sindra Father Ban Radada Oshmara de Rata Bishundra Oshira de Radara Do. Rosa Oshira de Sindra Oshira de Radha Vera Daso. Rosa Shimira de Sindra Oshmara de Rada. Roba de Basande. Father Radada Oshmara de Rata Bishmara de Rada Bosunda Oshmara de Rada Basundo. Roda Eshira de Sindra Oshira de Rasmara de Rata Bishundo. Roba de Sara de Sindra Oshira de Sindra Orada. Father, the Samara, the Sundo, Shira, the Rada, Samara, the Samara, the Rada. Robert, the Besundo, Shira, the Sindra, the Samara, the Rada, the Bissorada. Rosso, Shira, the Sindra, the Shira, the Rada, the Rada, the Samara. Robert, the Besundo, Shira, the Sindra, the Samara, the Rada, the Bissundo. Robert, the Sindra, the Shira, the Sindra, the Shira, the Rada, the Samara. Robert, the Sundo, Shira, the Rada, the Besundo, Shira, the Rada, the Sunday. Robert, the Sundo, Shira, the Sindra, the Shira, the Rada, Robert is a basor, the cinder, or sure, the cinder, or an adama. Robert is a basando, share the cinder, or sure, or in the basodo. Robert is a basando, share the cinder, or sure, or in the basodo. Robert is a basando, share the sabara, the sabara, or a basso. Robert is a basando, share the cinder, or sure, or the smarado. Robert is a cinder, share the cinder, or sure, or the smarado. Robert is a cinder, share the cinder, or sure, or the sound. Robert the Sindo, share the Sindo, O Shira de Smarado. Robert the Sindo, share the Sindo, O Shira de Sandrado. Robert the Sindo, share the Sindo, O Shmara de Zobazo. Robert the Sindo, share the Sindra Shara de Sundo. Robert the Sindo, share the Sindra, O Shira de Sindra de Oda. Robert the Sindo, share the Sindra de Vasora de Sundo. Robert the Sando, share the Sindra de Vasora de Sundo. Father, we last survive with the center of Shirada, and our son to all that was so. Robert, the center of Shiri, the center of all that was all that was all that was all that was Father, the center of Shiri, the center of Shirada, and our son to all that was all. Robert, the center of Shiri, the center of that spirit of the door. Rose, Shira, the center of Shiri, the spirit of the door. Robert, the center of Shira, the spirit of the door. Rose, Shira, the son to the spirit of the door. Robert the Sundo, Shira the Rada Sindra Oshma. Robert the Sindra Oshiri, the Sindra Oridana. Robert the Sindra Oshiri, the Sindra Oshma. Robert the Sundo, Shira the Spire of Manarode. Oshira the Sandra Oshira the Sunday. Father, I just thank you for that. Asma, Rose Shimara, the Sindra Oshma. Robert the Sundo, Shira the Spirit under the Sirada. Rada Baso Ishmira de Sindra Ishmi, Rosira de Sindra Oshma, Robert and Rada Sandra Oshmira de Sunday. Father, let the judgment Rada Rada alone in Roar and the Sindhu. Ishira de Sindhu, Shira de Rada Sunday. Father, pull down walls, Lord, do what no man can do. Rose Shimara is spirit under Sira de Sindhu. Father, we give you praise on the glory, Lord. Redasa, Ishere, the Sindra, O Sharara, the Spirit under the Lord. Lord, this Lord, the birth of us, the Roman, and the Rosmara, the Ishere, the Sindra, O Sharara, Aspa. Lord, the Sondo, Shere, the Rada Sunday. Father, Redasa, Ishere, the Sondo, Shere, the Rada. Rose, Shere, the Sindra, O Shma. Lord, the Bishonda, O Shere, the Sindra, the Rada. Rose, Shere, the Sindra, O Shere, the Sindra, the Sindra. Rose. Show me the spirit, the sun to assure the sun to day. Rose, she made her dad suffer at the sun to Shema. Rose, she made her the sin to Oshir Arana. Rose, so she made the sin to Oshir Arana. Father, I bind the people in Virginia and the city of Nassau. Rose, she made her the sin to Oshir Arana. Rose, so she made the sin to Daspa. Lord, I bind every person, Lord, that you show me. Lord, I bind every person's name, Lord, that you gave me. Issue of the Sindra or the Sunday. Lord, I bind the personal order that Sunday. All three, Lord, that were sitting in that house. 
I bind them in the name of Jesus, Lord. I bind it that tell us to follow us care of the Lord. I bind them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we look to recover all. Lord, we're like David, Lord. Shall I pursue and shall I recover all? Lord, I believe as, as we are in pursuit, Lord, and speaking the word, Lord, with signs following, Lord, and she read us here, that's all. Rosa Oshimara, the Sandra Ore, the Sunday. But slowly but surely, Lord, Ishira, the Sindra, change is being made. Ishira, the Sarah, a spirit under the Sirada, Rosa Oshimara, the Sundra Oshira, Rosa Oshira, the Sindra Oshira, the Buddha, Rosa Oshira, a spirit under the Sundra, Rosa Basamara, the Smara, the Smora, the Sindra Oshimara, the Buddha. Father, you work out everything, Lord, according to your will, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right out, Oshima. Rose, Shemira, the Sindra, Oshimira, the Sandra, O Lord, I thank you for a miracle in Asheville. Boy, I felt the virtue go out when I said that. Father, flood that place with your glory. Flood it, Lord. Bind every unclean spirit. Purge that house. Purge that place. Purge it. And I pray that by Shemari that Monday, I pray that the fear of God will come on them. Oh Shemari, Siri, the Siri, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit. Rosie, she married the Zander or the Sindra Oshme. Rosie, Shandra or the Sindra Osmarade. Rose, Madada Basandra, do Shirada Basande. The name is Shmarada Sande. Father, Rodos Marado, Spirit is Marada. The Son, Rodos Shimori, the Seer, Eshme, Rodos Marada, Smarada Sande. May the Holy Spirit, Ashma, Rose, the Shimori, the In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hmm. Jesus. Father, let truth precede us. The Spirit of Christ is truth. Father, let judgment fall. Father, the sword of the Shemarid Aaron to my son, though. Lord, the every right, Ashbara, Esther, Eshendra, O Spirit, the Spara, the Sunday. The Rose says, Shemara, the Sindra, O Shirada, and the Sunday. Father, let your righteous judgment prevail. Nobody can walk away from you, Lord. Huh. You know the, the intense <laughs> of the heart. You know, when Jesus. The Bible says if Jesus perceived their thoughts, he was talking about Pharisees and Sadducees. They didn't ask for permission. They didn't have faith. <laughs> but the gifts worked anyway, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They did. Jesus was around people who didn't really believe in God anymore. They were fake. But that didn't stop him with his relationship with the Father. And Jesus told them their thoughts. So it had to be a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. He didn't need that faith. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't, did he? Hmm. Told him exactly what their thoughts were. So just like Jesus did that, the gifts and calling out without, without repentance. So you get fired up enough. You be around folk who don't believe. I bet they believe when you get through. <laughs> yeah, I truly believe that. Uh, I know y'all are feeling the spirit of God. I'm still about to burn up. Um, the ocean has really, really been on me about the last almost four hours. And uh, 
I guess this might be a night where maybe kind of hard to sleep. I pray that the Lord will cool things down and if I'll be able to rest. Um, it's a great time now. Uh, check those people out that we talked about tonight. And check your Bible out and uh, take the limits off of God. Take God out of the box. He's not in your denominational box. You know, he's not in your church's box. Take him out and begin to learn more about him and see the limits. All right, there are none. The more time you spend with him, the more you get out of it. So continue to uh, seek the face of God. And as you do, we're doing it together because, I mean, you know, we're all learning. You know, I tell people I'm a student, and the students, um, Never stop learning. So we're just learning and we're we're sharing. And uh just look for God to continue to bless you. Uh tell people about the ministry page at Clay's at Greensboro. Uh there's a Facebook page, there's a YouTube page, or on Ustream. It's the Clay's at Greensboro. E K K L E S I A. I I like the, the Greek rendering, the Greek spelling, uh which it simply means church, means the church at Greensboro. And uh tell people about the ministry page. Like it and share the videos with your friends. Anybody who has any ideas about God, whether they consider themselves agnostic, atheist, or whatever. And you know somebody who uh, is hungry for God, curious about God, send them a video or two that they may look at it, that God may touch them. And uh, well, till then, we'll just see you next time, which will be uh, Sunday, Sunday at 7 o'clock.